arguments for trade union campaigns to repeal the Eighth Amendment is following on in the tradition that trade unions have traditionally played in 1983 to campaign for a woman's right to choose. And just this week I can announce that the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, the umbrella group of trade unions in this country, officially supports our campaign. That's a big win, guys. The trade union movement is the largest social justice movement in the country. We have 800,000 members north and south of the border. Just think of what we can do if we get outside the box of unions being for workplace only and think of it as a human rights organisation and think of what we can do on Repeal the Eight with those numbers. People often ask why is Repeal a trade union issue? Well, women make up more than 50% of all trade union membership in this country. And the CSO figures show us that 50% of working women in this country earn 20,000 euro or less. So if a woman finds herself in the position of a crisis pregnancy and has to travel abroad, she might have to pay anything from 800 to 2,000 euro, which can equate for a low paid worker to up to 10% of their annual income. The situation is significantly worse for no income or migrant women, so we know that this falls hardest on the poorest. This amounts to significant stress for a low-paid worker. That compounded with the added stress of being alone or in fear and distress travelling abroad denies women any semblance of dignity and is an affront to their basic human rights. And if women choose not to travel abroad and want to set abortion pills over the internet, they can get 14 years in prison or so too can anyone help them. We are not criminals. I am not a criminal and you are not a criminal and we refuse to be treated as such. This is also an access issue based on economic inequality. Because we already know that we have abortion in Ireland. Over 150,000 people have travelled abroad since 1983 to get an abortion. It's just those that can afford it can pay for it and do it. Those who can't, don't. And we cannot overemphasize as well how much of an equal rights issue this is for women. Because we know that 12 or more women a day are traveling abroad to get a medical procedure that they cannot get in their own country. There is no such restriction on any medical care to any man in this state that it falls within the same realm. This is a challenge for women. The Eighth Amendment that we stand is a barrier to progress. It denies women their rights and dignity. Further fueling the shame that this state has heaped on women over the years who have found themselves in a position of a crisis pregnancy. It's about time we dispel with all the secrets and lies. Why should it be possible for complete strangers, either individual or government legislators, to collectively make agreements, personal decisions for somebody else? What a woman chooses to do with her body is her choice and her choice alone, and it is definitely not a legal debate. <laughs> Up and out, we've been out and out, outspent, outpostured, outvoted, but no more. We have a voice and we intend to use it. We are not only pro choice, but we are pro voice. <laughs> and look at the amount of voices that are here today. The most common way that women lose their power is by thinking that they don't have any. And that is definitely not us. Women in this country deserve better and they deserve choice and they will get it. We expect nothing short of being treated equally to our male counterparts and insist that decisions concerning our lives and our bodies fall with us and not others determining our fate through a constitution that is outdated, archaic and in, inhumane. And I just want to make one other point actually because I forgot to make it earlier on when I was ranting. <laughs> the government that are here at the moment, and we all know that all the bad things they've done while they've been in power, but they have pushed the repeal debate under the carpet time and time again. 
and that has shown such a lack of respect for the women of this country and despite all of the bad things that they have done with austerity and everything else since they've been in power the fact that they just simply don't care about us should be good enough reason to never put them back in the door Okay, I'm not going to go too much longer. It's a sunny day. The prayers are getting bigger and bigger here, year on year, which is amazing. So go out now and have your voice heard and enjoy the day. Thank you.